Pro. 6 WikiHow Articles How to Determine If You Are a Tall Girl The 24 Best Party Games for Teens and How to Play Them How to Make a Difference as a Christian Youth 14 House Rules for Teenagers and Young Adults Living at Home How to Enjoy Your Early Teen Years 3 Cool Methods for Inventing a Nickname How to Enjoy Your Early Teen Years Quizzes Edit Explore Login Random Skip to Content Categories Youth 3 Cool Methods for Inventing a Nickname Download Article A Bunch of Quick Tricks to Make Up Nicknames for Yourself and All Your Friends Co-authored by Madeleine Flamiano Last Updated the 19th of March, 2024 Fact Checked Playing around with your first name Using your middle name or last name Cute and silly nicknames Nickname don'ts Video Expert Q&A Ready to try out a brand new nickname Maybe you think it'd just be easier to say On The other hand a ton of people might have the same first name, so you want a cool way to stand out. Or, you might just want to have fun inventing a whole new name for yourself. That's totally understandable, lots of us experiment with interesting nicknames to see what works. If you want to start a new chapter and create an awesome name everyone can call you by, check out this easy guide. Here, you will be able to put together a ton of nicknames in minutes. Things you should know. Base nicknames off of your first name, middle name, last name, initials, memorable puns, or rhymes. Try out traditions that your family has passed down. For example, Spanish. Cultures use suffixes like ito and ita while Japanese people use the suffix chan. Take inspiration from personality traits, inside jokes, pop culture, or even online. Nickname generators. Be kind with nicknames for others, they are meant to be affectionate and friendly. Method. 1. Playing around with your first name. Download article 1. Use one of the first syllables in your first name. Shorten the name you already have. It's really easy to do, and it's a fun option if you want a fresh start. Or to just switch things up. For example, maybe you just changed schools and you want a cool nickname when you make brand new friends. Just remove one. Of the last syllables in your first name. 1. Jonathan John, Abigail Abi, Zaya Zai. Samantha forward slash Samuel Sam. 2. Add an I E I or A Y to the shortened version of your first name. It's pretty common to have this type of nickname given to you in childhood, but lots of teens and even adults use this little trick. If your first name only has one syllable, then this method makes it sound catchier. You may need to add an extra consonant T O get the right look when you spell out your nickname. 2. Charles Charlie, Jennifer Jenny, Lucia Lucy. Daniel Danny, Alia Ally, Matthias Matty. 3. Sneak in a silent E at the end of your first name. This tactic makes your nickname sound a little more mature, but it also keeps everything friendly. Use the first syllable of your first name, then add an E to the end of it. Since the E is silent, you won't hear it, so you'll emphasize the last consonant instead. You might also swap out one consonant for another one to get a more classic. Nickname 3. 
Michael Mike. Kathleen Kate. 4. Make a nickname out of a middle or final syllable in your first name. It just depends on what calls out to you, does one of the middle syllables of your first name have a nice ring to it, or does the final syllable seem a lot more fun? After you make your choice, see if you prefer to throw out any consonants you don't want or add vowels like I, E, I or Y. 4. Frederick Rick forward slash rookie, Elizabeth Beth. Patrick Trick. Anthony Tony. 5. Draw from your family's traditions to form your nickname. If you like history or want to honor your culture, use one of the diminutives, shortened versions, of your first name that have been passed down over time. Ask people. In your family about any conventions they are aware of, or look through a name. Book to read about the meaning and origin of your first name. 5. One Middle English fad was to add and swap letters to make a nickname. 6. Henry Hank, Edward Tate. Many Spanish diminutives end in ITA, for girls, or ito, for boys. 7. Guadalupe Lupita, Juan Juanito. In India, many people use the first syllable of their name and add a U. 8. Nam Rata Nam U, Ashwini Ashu. 6. Add a silly or cute suffix to your first name. Give your name an edge with some inspo from Terminator, just take the first syllable of your first name. Then add the suffix innata to it. Or, if you want a cuter vibe, use the first syllable of your first name, replace a vowel if you want to, and include the suffix. Boo. 9. Sadira Sadabu. Dao Yi Dao Inata. Pull from affectionate suffixes from your culture. 2. For example, in Japan, if you're so or best. Friend adds the suffix chan to your first name. It means they really like you. 10. Akari Akari Chan. 7. Repeat one of the syllables of your first name. For an extra sweet or uplifting nickname, all you've got to do is take one syllable from your name you like, then double it up. This is especially common in areas like the Philippines where nicknames with repeated syllables are considered terms of endearment, ways to express affection. 11. Lusa Lulu. Molume Meme. Joseph Jojo. Method. 2. Using your middle name or last name. Download article. 1. Use your middle name. If you feel like your middle name represents you a lot better than your first name, just use it instead. If your parents were extra creative and gave you more than one middle name, decide if you want to use both or just one of them. Sometimes, you might just want to go by a middle name if you want to be low profile in a new place, like a house party in another city. 12. Ava Marie Thompson Marie. Daniel Christopher Avery Smith Avery. 2. Try out your last name. Guys usually go this route, but girls, or anyone of any gender identity, can totally use their last name if they want to. Sometimes, this kind of nickname is just one you roll with. Someone else in your class or your social circle might have your first name, but your last name helps set you apart. In some cases, your last name is just really short and simple, so you find it super convenient as a nickname. 13. Benjamin Lili. Catherine Albright Albright. Rosa Beck Beck. 3. Go by your initials. Use your first two initials, 
or all of your initials if you don't have a middle name to make a nickname or choose any combination of initials that you think really roll off the tongue most of the time people use their initials if their nickname ends w with an a sound like mk or an e sound like ld but there's no hard and fast rule some people even go by just their first initial 14 thomas james tj mary catherine mk lawrence adam desi ld bellatrix lestrange b 4 make an anagram an anagram is the way you arrange the letters of a word or phrase to create a new one a popular example comes up in jk rowling's harry potter series when tom marvolo riddle creates the anagram i am lord voldemort out of his original name it definitely takes some time and creativity to create an anagram but it's a fun activity that ends in a unique nickname 15 Diana Nadia Cleo Cole Caleb Blake Corey Royce Method 3 Cute and silly nicknames Download article 1 Be punny To be punny just have fun and make a pun a joke that's based off of a word, in this case, your first name. For example, turn Axel into Axe. Wield a Sal into Salamander or Ryan into Rhinoceros. There are all kinds of ways you can play around with your name to make your friends laugh. 16. Use alliteration by making a nickname with the first letter of your name. Hermione Humble Hermione, Ronald Radical. Ronald. Pick a word that rhymes with one of your names. Zoe Cozy Zoe, Jackson Relax in Jackson. Draw from the original meaning of your name or a word related to it. Sai is Burmese for Lord so go for a nickname. Like Duke. Come up with a pun based on what your name sounds like. Brandy sounds like Sandy so try a beachy name. Like Ariel. 2. Base your nickname off of unique traits. Lots of nicknames celebrate what makes someone cool, special, and memorable, a runner might be called. Lightning Bolt a proud New Yorker living away from home may be named. NYC a straight A student could be called Teach or a girl who loves Curly. FRIs could be given the nickname Curly Fry. 17. Use an adjective that describes a lovable part of someone's personality. Monty Thoughtful Monty, Katie Cheery Katie. As a silly twist, try a word that's the exact opposite of what someone is like. Calm Carlos Outrageous Carlos. 3. Come up with a cute pet name. If you're really close to someone, then invent a pet name, an affectionate nickname, that you use just for them and that expresses all your feelings. Celebrate your best friend, shower your so with tons of love, or goof off with your sibling, the possibilities are endless. 18. My best friend Victoria BFF, best friend forever. My boyfriend Xavier my whole world. My little brother Cody little nugget. 4. Draw inspo from a pop culture reference. Bond with your buddies over your favorite TV shows, books, or movies. Make a fun game out of assigning everyone their own special nickname based off one of their favorite characters. It'll bring you all closer together and each of you will be able to rep the series you love the most. 19. Book Reference, My Friend Who Loves the Percy. Jackson Series Nico. Movie Reference, My Friend Who Loves the Hunger. Games Katniss. 
TV show reference, My Friend Who Loves Stranger. Things 11. Anime reference, My Friend Who Loves My Hero Academia Raid. Riot. 5. Use an inside joke. Inside jokes just happen naturally and you can't really force them to catch on. Once your inner circle does come up with some cool inside jokes though, they are an awesome source of inspiration. Here are a few of scenarios to give you an idea of how inside jokes turn into nicknames. 20. Your buddy went to three Harry Styles concerts, so you call him Stylin' Nick. Your friend always predicts pop quizzes, so you call her Fortune. Teller. Your crew loves to cheer at events, so you call each other. Scream Queens. 6. Use some fun online tools. When you take quizzes and answer a bunch of questions about yourself, the results will suggest nicknames that probably match your personality. If you type your name into online generators, it's more of a surprise because lots of these will give you a totally random nickname. If you want to play around, try these. 21. Select Smart's Nickname Quizzes. Go to Quizzes What Nickname Suits My Personality Quiz. Spinxo's Nickname Generator. Fantasy Name Generator's Fantasy and Sci-Fi Nickname. Generator. Method. 4. Nickname Don'ts. Download Article. 1. Steer clear of way over the top nicknames. One easy rule to remember is to just avoid bragging too much. For example, even if you work out a ton and put a lot of effort into fitness, which is a good thing, you don't need to call yourself muscle man every day. If people give you compliments, great. Just wait for them to praise you. 22. 2. Avoid nicknames that are hard to remember or pronounce. Most nicknames that stick are super straightforward and relatable. Xulu might seem like a cool idea, but it's unlikely to catch on. Stick to nicknames that are no more than a few syllables, are easy to spell, and are simple to say. 23. 3. Make sure your nickname is appropriate in every situation. If you want to be able to use your nickname everywhere you go, consider whether it would fly in the classroom. Go a step further, do you think your future professors, bosses, or co-workers would approve of the nickname? To be extra careful, Google your NIC name to see if it has any meanings you're not aware of. 24. 4. Be chill if people don't use your nickname. A nickname should be a fun, casual thing, it's a bonus if it catches on and everyone calls you by it, but it's definitely not a requirement. Plus, there are always other chances to remind people of your nickname, like when a teacher starts an icebreaker game or you Introduce yourself at parties. 25. 5. Be kind when you give other people nicknames. The whole point of a nickname is to express friendship and affection. Remember, if you give someone a nickname that hurts their feelings or makes them uncomfortable, that counts as bullying. To avoid being insensitive, even if it's an accident, keep these manners in mind. 26. If you're unsure about whether a nickname is okay, try it out in a one-on-one -on -one setting. This makes sure that the other person feels safe and has a chance to say if they don't like the nickname. If you are having trouble figuring out your friend's reaction, ask. Did I make you uncomfortable when I called you Tina just now? 
If their answer is yes then thank them for their honesty. And don't use the nickname in the future. 27. Even if you didn't mean to be insulting and thought you were just playing around with your friend, it's important to respect their wishes. Expert Q&A Question What could I use as a nickname for Hasty Shaladia? Wikihow The most trusted how-to site on the internet. Expert answer What an amazing name. You might use the last syllable of your first name and go by T or T forward slash T. You may also combine the final syllable of your first name with the first syllable of your last name and come up with Tish. Or, you can refer to yourself by the final two syllables of your last name, Daya. Interestingly, Daya has Indian origins and is Hindi for light or glow. If you do decide on a nickname, report back and let us know what you chose. Not helpful 5 helpful 22. Question. What are good gender-neutral nicknames for Isabella? Wikihow. The most trusted how-to site on the internet. Expert answer. Since Bell or Bella are feminine nicknames for Isabella you may wish to. Try is Isa is Elen or Lee. You can even go with Sabe Sable L or Z. Fun trivia, Isa is the name of a character in the popular video game. Franchise, Kingdom Hearts. Not helpful for helpful 22. Question. What could I use as a nickname for Kalali? Community answer. You could use Kali, Kali, Kale, Kale, Kai, Li, Lia, Leela, LLA, Cal, or any other. Creative nickname that you could think of. Not helpful 20 helpful 40. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Video. Tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. You might also like. How to. Enjoy your early teen years. 14 house rules for teenagers and. Young adults living at home. How to make a difference as a Christian youth. How to determine if you are a tall girl. The 24 best party games for teens and how to play them. How to have fun with your cousin for a week. How to emancipate yourself as a teen, requirements and legal process. How to have fun after exams. How to be a good girl. How to be a girl's girl. How to make the most of your summer vacation, for teens. How to have a successful teenage life. How to choose your own nickname to fit your name. How to create a cool nickname. References 1 https forward slash forward slash www.atlasobscura.com forward slash articles forward slash Australian nicknames. 2 https forward slash forward slash namesfrog.com forward slash great names that end in y or ie forward slash. 3 https forward slash forward slash www.languageecouncils.sg forward slash good English forward slash resources forward slash spelling tips forward slash asylum. TE helps a vowel say its name. 4 http forward slash forward slash itter.cis.upn.edu forward slash tilde myl forward slash language log forward slash archives forward slash 004419.html 5 https forward slash forward slash www.collinsdictionary.com forward slash dictionary forward slash english forward slash diminutive 
six https forward slash forward slash namebre dot com forward slash blog forward slash nickname names how did Henry get to Hank? Seven https forward slash forward slash Spanish four one one dot net forward slash Spanish diminutive augmentatives dot asp. 8 https forward slash forward slash shining korean dot com forward slash 2011 forward slash 04 forward slash 13 forward slash diminutives forward slash 9 https forward slash forward slash thueek dot com forward slash articles forward slash 460279 forward slash linguistic tour best lib fixes from anazi LLA more references, 18. About this article. Co-authored by Madeleine Flamiano. WikiHow staff writer. This article was co-authored by WikiHow staff writer, Madeleine Flamiano. Madeleine. Flamiano is an editing fellow at WikiHow based in Berkeley, California, as well as a team organizer, copy editor and movie critic for Incluvi. Madeleine has 12 years of experience in literacy advocacy and the creative arts that span tutoring, teaching, writing, public relations, and non-profit support. She has penned seven novels under a pseudonym and loves all escapist genres, from cozy fantasies to hard-boiled sci-fi. Her Professional path started at NaNoWriMo, where she scripted and hosted a series on world building. Madeleine graduated from Mills College with a BA in English with a concentration in literature and a minor in philosophy. This article has been viewed 769,160 times. 22 votes, 54%. Co-authors, 75. Updated, the 19th of March, 2024. Views, 769,160. Categories, featured articles youth. In other languages. Spanish. Russian. French. Indonesian. German. Dutch. Print. Send fan mail to authors. Thanks to all authors for creating a page that has been read 769,160 times. Did this article help you? Yes no. If you buy through links on our site, we may earn a commission. Co-authored by Madeleine Flamiano WikiHow staff writer 22 votes 54%. Click a star to vote. Co-authors, 75. Updated, the 19th of March, 2024. Views, 769,160. Quizzes. A My Smart Quiz. Take Quiz. What Disney Princess Am I Quiz? Take Quiz. Do I have a phobia quiz? Take quiz. Do I have a dirty mind quiz? Take quiz. Guess my age quiz. Take quiz. How insecure am I quiz? Take quiz. You might also like. How to. Enjoy your early teen years. 14 house rules for teenagers and young adults living at home. How to. Make a difference as a Christian youth. How to Determine if you are a tall girl. Featured articles. How to Reduce acne scars with home remedies. What celebrity do I look like quiz. How to Write funny stories. How to Arrange furniture in a small bedroom. How to play the werewolf card game with your friends. How to Deal with a know-it-all Trending articles How to do 4th of July nails, 40 plus nail art ideas 
The real meaning of how was your night. Plus the best answers to give. How to celebrate the 4th of July, 42 Independence Day activities. What it means to raise a girl. Couple compatibility test. How to hold a newborn baby, safe and proper techniques. Featured articles. Am I in love quiz. How to give a relaxing full body massage at home. How to swim. How to make chicken nuggets. Simple and effective ways to stay hydrated overnight. How to wear a bikini confidently. Featured articles. How to have a summer fling. How to make banana bread. How to make water taste better. How to succeed in college. 17 Pro Tips to Start Living a Healthier Lifestyle Watch Articles How to Make Stamped Metal Jewelry How to Make Hot Cheetos How to Make an Aloe Vera Face Mask How to Fold a Shirt for Travel How to Apply Eye Makeup on Fair Skin How to Stretch your inner thighs. Trending articles. How to exfoliate your body for soft skin. Temperament test, what is my true personality? 21 important things to know about your partner. Coffee ground disposal, here's the right way to get rid of used grounds. How to play murder the game. How to clean your airpods without damaging them. Categories Youth Wikihow Newsletter Helpful How-Tos Delivered to Your Inbox Every Week Sign Me Up By signing up you are agreeing to receive emails according to our privacy policy. Home About Wikihow Experts Jobs Contact Us Site Map Terms of Use Privacy Policy Contribute Wikihow Tech Help Pro Develop the tech skills you need for work and life. Let's do this. X Join us in our mission. For over a decade, we've been on a mission, to help everyone in the world learn how to do anything. Today, we're asking that you join us. Any amount that you can contribute helps us to continue providing readers like you with trusted, accurate and up-to-date information. Please consider supporting our continued work with a contribution to Wikihow. Let's do this. Skip to content. Pro. Quizzes. Edit. Explore. Login. Random. Wikihow is where trusted research and expert knowledge come together. Learn why people trust. Wikihow Categories Youth How to enjoy your early teen years Download article Parts 1. Staying healthy 2. School life 3. Personal life Plus show one more Other sections Tips and warnings. Related articles. Expert interview. References. Co-authored by Alison Broneman, PhD. Last updated, the 1st of July, 2024. References. The early teen years mark the start of high school, adolescence, and growing up. Oftentimes. Young teenagers may be unsure of how to live their early teens happily and well. These are your last years before you start preparing for college and adulthood. Here are some ways to live out your years from 13 to 15 well. Part 1. Staying healthy. Download article. 1. Get enough sleep. In your middle school and high school years, your sleep will decrease, 
usually due to more assignments. It is still crucial to get enough sleep. In order to perform well in school, your body uses sleep as a time to repair itself and for rest. 1. Don't stay up too late, after midnight, regularly. Teenagers 13 to 18 years old need 8 to 10 hours of sleep. 2. If you sleep well, you will also avoid being late to school. 2. Eat healthy. If you go to the grocery store with your parents, check out what foods are healthy there. You will be more independent soon, so you will need to get your own food. Go to the store and choose healthy fruits and vegetables. If you're buying packaged food, check the nutrition facts on the back side to see if it has a lot of added sugars, sodium, or trans fats. Eat a balanced diet consisting of vegetables, fruits, protein, grains, and dairy every day. You can add in an unhealthy snack from time to time, but don't. Make it a daily treat. 3. Exercise. Exercise every day and maintain a routine. If you have gym class on, some days, you won't need to exercise additionally. Find fun ways to exercise if it is boring for you. Dancing, playing a sport, jump roping, and playing outdoor. Games are great ways to exercise while enjoying the experience. Exercise for the health benefits and the experience. Even going on a long walk to the mall with friends counts as exercise. As long as your heart rate increases and you're exerting yourself, you're exercising. 4. Stay mentally healthy. The teen years are a rocky road for many, as you are discovering yourself and moving on from being a kid. Teens deal with all sorts of pressures and stresses in their school life and personal life. So, it is important that you take care of your mental health as well as your physical health. Carve out time in your schedule to relax. Even if it's just 30. Minutes before bedtime, you should have enough time to do things you enjoy on the weekdays. Having barely any time left when you get home can be stressful, since you're not engaging with your hobbies or stress-relieving activities. Talk to someone if you are struggling, whether that's a parent, sibling, friend, or teacher, you should have a source of support when you're struggling. 5. Go to a doctor if you haven't started puberty and you are 15 to 16. Yes, there are many late bloomers out there who start puberty in high school. Being a late bloomer is normal. Females can start puberty at ages 8 to 14, and males at 9 to 15 years old. But, if you haven't started puberty at 15, you should go see a doctor. Not starting puberty at 15 to 16 years old could indicate a hormonal issue. 3. Additionally, if you have any issues with your period. Irregularities after 1 to 2 years of regular cycles, extremely. Painful periods, periods that last for more than a week, see an. Abgyn. 4. 6. Seek a mental health expert if you show signs of a mental health issue. During the teenage years, it is common to experience some mental health issues. If you are experiencing some of these symptoms, consider talking to a school counselor or a therapist. Depression. This is indicated by a low mood. The affected person has feelings of sadness, emptiness, or hopelessness. They lose interest in activities they used to like. They may have mood swings and get emotional over small things that didn't bother 
them before. 5. Some teens may harm themselves or consider taking their own life. If you feel this way, please call a mental health hotline or dial 988 in the U.S. Eating disorder, this is indicated by an obsession over their appearance. Teens often obsessively check their weight to see if they gained any. They may refuse to eat much or eat in secret. Some try to lose the calories they gained by vomiting or taking laxatives. Others excessively exercise, wearing themselves out. The affected person may feel ashamed of themselves and have low self-esteem. 6. Anxiety disorder, this is indicated by constant anxiety. Teens may feel anxious every day. They may also get worried over little things that didn't concern them before. You can't function normally in certain situations. Some people get panic attacks. They may avoid the event altogether to prevent themselves from feeling anxious. 7. Addiction, this is indicated by constant thinking about the subject. The person constantly thinks about the subject. They may skip mandatory or important events to get it. They may go through physical and emotional withdrawal symptoms if they are unable to get it. 8. Part 2. School Life Download Article 1. Don't stress out too much about high school if you are in your last year of middle school. Yes, you are growing up and thus, have more responsibilities. But, it's nearly the same, it's just that people are more mature in high school. Additionally, don't believe the high school stereotypes portrayed in pop culture. No, not everyone dates in high school. Fights don't break out all the time, and people don't know what's going on everywhere all the time, especially if it's a large school. It's helpful to talk to an older adult, like an older friend, sibling, or parent about their high school experience to feel reassured. 2. Set your study habits. You should already be in the habit of studying. If you haven't yet, set up a study schedule. Set up a table with the days Monday to Friday, or Sunday to Saturday, and write down what subjects you have every day for that week. You can do this with a planner or a calendar too. Then, write down important tests coming up, and how many minutes you'll study for for each subject. If you don't set up your study habits now, you may be prone to procrastination and inefficient study habits in your late high school years, which isn't beneficial to boosting your grades. Bad habits get more difficult to break the longer you keep them. 3. Be on time to your classes. You don't want to have multiple TARDIS in your School attendance record, as these will be shown when you apply to colleges. Colleges aren't likely to accept someone who is late constantly. Plus, you are showing respect to the class you are attending, as well as the teacher. It's best to do this earlier on. If you are late in 9th and 10th grade, your teachers may comment on your tardiness to future. Teachers that may teach you in your later years, which gives them a bad image of you. 4. Make some friends. If you're in your last year of middle school, you may be sad to leave your friends behind. However, remember that high school is another new beginning, you get to leave frenemies, bullies, and your past behind. Plus, you can contact your best friends from middle school with technology. You don't have to forget about them. In your freshman year, try 
making friends with other freshmen, as well as maintain some of your old friends. During high school orientation, talk to some people sitting next to you. Some subjects to talk about include which middle schools you went to, hobbies, electives you took, excitement. About high school, world events, pop culture events, etc. Part 3. Personal Life Download Article 1. Find what you enjoy. You are constantly changing and evolving, so your interests will change. Your interests at 5 years old will be different from when you are 10, and when you are 15. You don't have to stick with something you don't like anymore, even if you've done it for years. So, if you're tired of taking piano, try quitting piano and taking up something else. Your parents may not agree. Try convincing them that the benefits of taking a class that you like is better for your happiness. Additionally, you want to try something new. You may be taking this class to learn something useful for your potential career too. 2. Don't spend all of your free time on the Internet. As of 2024, the average person spends around 7 hours on their screens. 9. Except for computer time. During class or for homework, you should limit your time on the Internet. Think about it, what memories will you have if you scroll and watch videos for hours? Every day. You won't have many interesting memories of your teenage years in the future. Doing the same thing for hours is pretty boring. Also, you are wasting a lot of time. Instead, use this time for mostly engaging in hobbies, exercising, or relaxing offline. You can also spend time with family and hang out regularly with them in a common living space such as a living room. 3. Spend time with your family. Because you are a teenager, you may cringe at the thought of having board game night with your family every Friday. However, activities like this promote bonding with your family, and it makes your relationship better. You may learn conflict resolution and what beliefs your parents have as well as remove assumptions. Of course, if your relationship with your parents is toxic, then you can distance yourself from them. Some ways to spend time with your family includes having a weekly game night forward slash movie night, riding bikes, hiking, karaoke night, etc. 10. 4. Calm down if you are angry with your parents. Sometimes, your parents may annoy you, which causes you to get furious with them. They may treat you like a kid when you want to grow more independent. 11. Realize that yelling, screaming, and arguing is not effective communication, and arguing will drive a wedge into you and your parents' relationship. You may regret being estranged from your parents when you are an adult. Your parents may not understand what they did to make you unhappy. Additionally, some parents may be clingy because they are apprehensive about you growing up. If you sit down and explain how you are feeling and why you are feeling this way to your parents, you may find a way to solve the problem. Use I language when explaining your emotions. Find a way to compromise if your parents have strong feelings for something. Sometimes, you may have to give in to your parents. Your parents may be doing what is best for you. You may have to wait until you are an adult to get a piercing, and that's okay. It's not the 
end of the world, and you can wait a few months and check again to see if they will allow you. 5. Set realistic expectations when dating. Many people date in their teen years. If you want to date as a teenager, think about how you view relationships. Understand that having a relationship is a commitment, and you will get into arguments with your significant other at one point. Every day won't be a beautiful fairy tale. You will need to be mature enough and learn how to handle conflicts, as well as talk about difficult subjects sometimes. Don't date someone solely because of their looks. Most people develop crushes based on physical appearance, but you shouldn't be intentionally dating people because they look good. Know that you have your rights. You can always say no if you are uncomfortable with something. Talk thoroughly about whether or not you are ready to have sex. Both people need to be consenting for this to occur. Stay safe if you are dating on the internet. Don't reveal your personal information to someone you are dating online unless you have seen their face. 6. Don't let social media influence you. Social media is a large space for users to communicate and post what is happening in their daily life. Social media can increase your connections, especially if you and your friends communicate with it. But it can isolate you if you overuse it. Scrolling for hours on social media is unproductive, and you may develop an addiction to it. It may also expose you to unrealistic standards and cyberbullying, which could lead to self-esteem issues, anxiety, or depression. 12, 13. Hang out with your friends in school and outside of school. Go to their house to hang out and have a sleepover if you've gotten to know them better. Invite them to your birthday party, or just Chat after class. When you have free time outside of school, try doing other activities offline. Depending on social media for boredom isn't healthy. Having healthy boredom that requires you to do something creative, instead of giving your brain easy dopamine by scrolling, is better. Actually take the time to find something you enjoy. 7. Try finding a job. Teens can't be employed into the formal workforce yet, but they can work part-time shifts. Look around your neighborhood to see if anyone needs help, or think of a business idea. Doing this shows that you are responsible, and you are actually thinking about earning a decent amount of money for yourself. Some jobs that teens can do include, 14, 15. Babysitting young children. Taking care of pets. Mowing lawns. Tutor. Dog walker. Part. 4. Discovering yourself. Download article. 1. Find a good older influence. Whether that's an older sibling or a junior you met in high school, find a good influence. These mentors can help you if you have any questions about high school. They may be able to help you with homework if they took a class you shared. They can help you throughout your teenage years and possibly help discover yourself. Avoid bad influences. The teenage years often determine part of your habits and your personality in your adult years, so be careful. If your friend encourages you to vandalize, smoke, do drugs, bully others, get into fights, then stay away from them. 2. Stop trying to fit in a mold. We all experience surface pressure and peer 
pressure from time to time. You might be scared that doing something different may make you the target of bullying. Friends you have may have taught you to cringe at someone liking an underrated hobby, for example knitting. If you truly like it, you don't have to follow what others say. Break the surface pressure by freely expressing what you believe. You can stand up for what you believe in because you have a voice. You may be part of the minority, but that's not a bad thing. It's great to try something new too, if there's a new course offered in school, you may be one of the first ones to try it out. Maybe it's an interesting class you want to take again, or maybe it's not the right fit for you. The teenage years are hot spots for intense peer pressure, since everyone is self-conscious and forward slash or judging each other. 16, however, you don't have to be like this. Be yourself, it makes you happier in the long term, and you may share opinions that help people. 3. Express yourself. High school is the last frontier before you become an adult. So enjoy it while you can. High school is very stressful for many people, because of the pressures of school, applying to college, and becoming an adult. But a way to enjoy it is to express yourself. In adulthood, you may not have the freedom of expressing yourself in the workforce due to high standards and expectations of being professional. Middle school and high school are good times to figure out your fashion sense, what music you like, what friends you look for, etc. Even if your school requires uniforms, you can still express yourself. Don't be forced into liking a certain type of style. Discover what you like on your own. Some fashion styles include the preppy, goth, emo, skater, punk, scene, vsco, and fashionista styles. You also don't have to fit into one category, you can use accessories from multiple styles of fashion. Find out what artists you like listening to. You don't have to listen to pop that's overplayed on the radio. You may find out cooler underrated artists. Or, you may find musicians from earlier decades, like the 2000s, 90s, 80s, and 70s that you enjoy a lot. 4. Avoid peer pressure. Peer pressure can be helpful sometimes. If your peers encourage you to study well in order to attend a good college, that's good. Pressure. They are encouraging you to change your bad habits to good ones. But bad pressure is something that you shouldn't give in to. If someone is forcing you to do things that are dangerous, wrong, or unwanted, don't give in. You can make up an excuse, but keep in mind that this won't work all the time. You can honestly say to them, I'm not interested in activity, or my parents don't allow me to do activity. 5. Remember your priorities in high school. Because of peer pressure, you may be tempted to adopt a party and carefree lifestyle going to parties and hanging out at people's houses until late at night. But you shouldn't do this. High school is an influential time for teenagers, and it shapes who you are going to be in your adulthood. You may adopt bad habits and keep them through adulthood, making you struggle through your working years. You don't need to go to every party to have a social life. You can make friends that aren't party animals. You don't need to become popular in high school. Peaking in high school in terms of social life can be detrimental to your
future, especially if you used bad ways to become on top of the social ladder. Colleges will see what you did in high school, and they won't accept you if your reputation was bad. In stricter schools, this probably won't happen. But be very cautious when dating. Additionally, wait until you are mature enough to get sexually active. Having sex is a very serious thing. And you should wait until you are emotionally ready and mature enough to do so. 6. Embrace change. The early teen years are often a large transition for people. You graduate middle school, go through puberty, enter high school, and immediately need to start thinking about your future. Even two years, from 13 to 15, may be a large change for you. It is normal for people to change. People change all the time, and everyone is always learning from until they die. No matter how old you are, you will still be different than what you were in the past. If you still have hobbies that are traditionally reserved for younger people, you can still follow them. As long as it doesn't harm anyone else or disrupt your own life, you can do it. If you're sad about growing up, reframe your thinking in a positive way. Growing up means you can become financially independent. Plus, you may get a job you really like. You may learn new skills. Getting a job and being happy during these times may be difficult, but you will make it through. Expert Q&A Ask a question. Submit Tips Keep a balance. Do things in moderation, usually, too little or too much of a thing is bad. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. You might also like. Three cool methods for inventing a. Nickname. 14 house rules for teenagers and. Young adults living at home. How to. Make a difference as a Christian youth. How to. Determine if you are a tall girl. The 24 best party games for teens and how to play them. How to have fun with your cousin for a week. How to emancipate yourself as a teen, requirements and legal process. How to have fun after exams. How to be a good girl. How to be a girl's girl. How to Make the most of your summer vacation, for teens. How to Have a successful teenage life. How to Join 4-H. How to Choose your own nickname to fit your name. Expert interview. Thanks for reading our article. If you'd like to learn more about psychology, check out our in-depth interview with Alison Broneman. PhD. References. 1 https forward slash forward slash forward slash 2021 forward slash 04 forward slash good sleep good health. 2 https forward slash forward slash www.cdc.gov forward slash health schools forward slash features forward slash students sleep dot htm hash tilde text equals ho w percent 20 much percent 20 sleep percent 20 someone percent 20 needs 10 percent 20 hours percent 20 per percent 2024 percent 20 hours 3 https forward slash forward slash kidshield.org forward slash en forward slash parents forward slash delayed puberty html 
4 https forward slash forward slash www.webmd.com forward slash women forward slash features forward slash period problems what they mean dash when to see doctor 5 https forward slash forward slash www.mayoclinic.org forward slash diseases conditions forward slash teen depression forward slash symptoms Causes forward slash SYC 20350985. 6 HTTPS forward slash forward slash www.webmd.com forward slash mental health forward slash eating disorders forward slash understanding ET. In disorders teens. 7 https forward slash forward slash www.webmd.com forward slash teens forward slash anxiety and teens. 8 https forward slash forward slash www.verywellhealth.com forward slash teenage drug addiction 5213002. 9 https forward slash forward slash exploding topics dot com forward slash blog forward slash screen time stats. More references, 7. About this article. Co authored by Alison Broneman, PhD. Clinical psychologist. This article was co authored by Alison Broneman, PhD. Dr. Alison Broneman is a Licensed clinical psychologist with a private practice based in the San Francisco Bay area providing psychotherapy and neuropsychology services. With over a decade of experience, Dr. Broneman specializes in in-depth psychotherapy to provide solution-focused treatments for anxiety, depression, relationship problems, grief, adjustment problems, traumatic stress, and phase of life transitions. And as part of her neuropsychology practice, she integrates depth psychotherapy and cognitive rehabilitation for those recovering after traumatic brain injury. Dr. Broneman holds a BA in psychology from the University of California, Santa Cruz, and an MS and PhD in Clinical Psychology from Palo Alto University. She is licensed by the California Board of Psychology and is a member of the American Psychological Association. This article has been viewed 20,305 times. 10 votes, 90%. Co-authors, 9. Updated, 1 July 2024. Views, 20,305. Categories, Featured Articles Youth. Print. Send fan mail to authors. Thanks to all authors for creating a page that has been read 20,305 times. Did this article help you? Yes no. Co-authored by. Alison Broneman, Ph.D. Clinical Psychologist Co-authors, 9 Updated, 1 July, 2024 Views, 20,305 90% of readers found this article helpful 10 votes, 90% Click a star to add your vote Anonymous March 3 I'm almost a teenager and I want to figure out junior and high cool, and I think this will help. Share yours. Quizzes. A My Smart Quiz. Take Quiz. What Disney Princess Am I Quiz? Take Quiz. Do I Have a Phobia Quiz? Take Quiz. Do I Have a Dirty Mind Quiz? Take Quiz. Guess My Age Quiz. Take quiz. How insecure am I quiz? Take quiz. You might also like. Three cool methods for inventing a nickname. 14 house rules for teenagers and young adults living at home. How to. 
Make a difference as a Christian youth. How to Determine if you are a tall girl. Featured articles How to Reduce acne scars with home remedies. What celebrity do I look like quiz? How to Write funny stories. How to Arrange furniture in a small bedroom. How to play the werewolf card game with your friends. How to Deal with a know-it-all. Trending articles. How to do 4th of July nails, 40 plus nail art ideas. The real meaning of how was your night. Plus the best answers to give. How to celebrate the 4th of July, 42 Independence Day activities. What it means to raise a girl. Couple compatibility test. How to hold a newborn baby, safe and proper techniques. Featured articles. Am I in love quiz. How to give a relaxing full body massage at home. How to. Swim. How to. Make chicken nuggets. Simple and effective ways to stay hydrated overnight. How to. Wear a bikini confidently. Featured articles. How to. Have a summer fling. How to. Make banana bread. How to make water taste better. How to. Succeed in college. 17 Pro Tips to Start Living a Healthier Lifestyle Watch Articles How to Make Stamped Metal Jewelry How to Make Hot Cheetos How to Make an Aloe Vera Face Mask How to Fold a Shirt for Travel How to Apply Eye Makeup on Fair Skin How to Stretch your inner thighs. Trending articles. How to. Exfoliate your body for soft skin. Temperament test. What is my true personality? 21 important things to know about your partner. Coffee ground disposal. Here's the right way to get rid of used grounds. How to play murder the game. How to clean your airpods without damaging them. Categories Youth WikiHow Newsletter Helpful How-Tos Delivered to Your Inbox Every Week Sign Me Up By signing up you are agreeing to receive emails according to our privacy policy. Home About WikiHow Experts Jobs Contact Us Site Map Terms of Use Privacy Policy Contribute WikiHow Tech Help Pro Level up your tech skills and stay ahead of the curve. Let's go. Skip to Content Pro Quizzes Edit Explore Login Random WikiHow is where trusted research and expert knowledge come together. Learn why people trust. WikiHow Categories Youth 14 House Rules for Teenagers and Young Adults Living at Home Download Article Setting Boundaries When Your Adult Child Lives at Home Co-authored by Kirsten Thompson, MD and Luke Smith, MFA Last Updated, the 17th of June, 2024 Fact Checked for 18-year-olds, living at home is a sensible way to weather a tough economy and build up to a more independent life. But living with a young adult is different than living with the child they once were, and you'll need to set some ground rules to make Suri your entire household run smoothly. We've compiled the 14 most important rules to establish to help you and your teen. Get comfortable. Just not too comfortable, the nest has got to empty someday. Things you should know. Negotiate expenses like rent, utilities, and food. If your teen is working, 
and making money, they can contribute to the household costs. Set a timeline for when your teen needs to start looking for housing or moving out to keep them focused on becoming independent. Divide up household chores like vacuuming, cooking, or pet care. If your teen lives at home, they should pitch in to maintain that home. 1. Set a curfew or quiet hours. Download article. Establish when your teen needs to be home to protect your own. Rest. They're young and will probably want to stay out all night now. And then, but you can't have them slamming the front door when they get back at 3 a.m. 1. A curfew of around midnight or 1 a.m. is more than reasonable. Tell them that after that, the doors are locked. Alternatively, set some quiet hours to give them a little more freedom. Sure, they can come home late, but no. Loud noises or voices louder than a whisper after, say, 11 p.m. If your teen does want to stay out late on occasion, have them tell you a day or two beforehand, so you know where. They are and you're not staying up waiting for them. 2. Encourage them to find work or go to school. Download article. Let them know that they can't hang around the house all day. And. That doesn't mean just spending their day at a cafe or a friend's house. It's time for them to contribute to the household, and that means. Finding work or studying to help them find work later. 2. Suggest that they get an entry-level, part-time job, like working as a barista or waiting tables to help act as a reference on their job applications or drive them to interviews. If you're able, offer to help them pay for school. Colleges a big investment, and many young adults find it difficult to shoulder that burden alone. Or, letting them stay at home might be how you support them through school. If this is the case, consider easing up or even overlooking rent or bills. 3. Ask for rent or help with bills. Download article. Acclimate them to the cost of living if they have an income. It's true that new adults aren't exactly raking in the cash, and living at home is an opportunity for them to save. But this is also an opportunity to train them for a more independent life, where bills are a reality. 3. Go easy on them as they discover their newfound financial independence but make it clear that this isn't a free ride. Use a site like Zillow to look up rental rates in your area. Then set your teen's rate to around half that. This lets them contribute to the household while also saving up. Don't forget things like electric or water bills. If you feel it's necessary, have your teen pay their fraction of the utilities. For example, if there are four people living under your roof, request that they pay a quarter of the bill. 4. Assign household chores. Download article. Prepare your teen for the work involved in running a household. Rent and utilities are negotiable, chores are not. Formulate a list of all the tasks it takes to keep your household running, and choose 4 to 5 to assign to your teen. 4. Or, prepare them for independent life by letting them handle all their own daily chores, they do their own laundry, cook their own food, clean their own living space, etc. Get your teen to actually do their chores by showing them how to properly complete them. Then, create a Schedule for when they ought to be completed. Make it clear that completing those chores is a prerequisite for living there. If chores aren't done, they'll 
have to look for another home where they can skip their responsibilities. 5. Discuss food arrangements. Download article. Tell them how much you're willing to feed or cook for them. When they're off and living alone, they'll be left to fend for themselves. Now's the time to ease them into that. Will they be responsible for their own groceries? Will your pantry be open to them, but they have to cook their own meals? 5. Decide how comfortable you are providing for them as they live under your roof. Meal times are a big deal for many families, and you may not want to exclude your teen from that. You might decide that providing their food is worth the bonding experience of eating together. Or, teach your teen to cook some basic meals, and ask them to prepare those meals for the household two to three nights a week to pitch in on the food front. 6. Set a policy for guests. Download article. Establish when and how often your team can have guests over. A. Total ban on guests is a tad unreasonable, but so is having strangers in. Your house day in, day out. Lay down some ground rules for the sorts. Of gathering your team can have. 6. House parties are probably off the table, but two to three friends every now and then helps them keep a healthy social life. For example, designate a couple days of the week, like Fridays and Saturdays, as fair game for guests, with plenty of notice beforehand, of course. Also discuss what kinds of guests can stay. You might be Totally fine with a friend spending the night, but romantic. Partners could be a no-go, depending on your beliefs or philosophies. 7. Discuss rules for sharing a vehicle. Download article. Ask them to use public transport if you don't have a vehicle for them. Your child might have had access to the family car when they were younger. But now that they're of age, it's time for them to figure out their own transportation. That might mean taking the bus, or investing in a bicycle. 7. Alternatively, create a schedule for when, and how, they can take the car. If they don't already have one, help your teen get their license. This makes it easier for them to help out with. Errands, 2. 8. Take a hard line on bad habits or illegal activities. Download article. Don't tolerate drugs or alcohol abuse in the house. When they're on their own, it'll be out of your control. But make it clear that while under your roof, you won't tolerate bad habits, even if your child is a legal adult now. 8. This goes for other negative behaviors, too, like gambling, theft, or even the language they use. Make a complete list of zero-tolerance behavior. At the same time, be sure to respect their space. Invasive behavior like frequent room checks only serves to damage the trust between you. If your teen does struggle with addictive behaviors, let them know you're there to help. A strong household supports its members, after all. 9. Make a schedule for TV or entertainment use. Download article. Protect your household's peace by establishing screen time. Rules. It might sound silly but use of the entertainment center can be a volatile problem for many households. Write out a schedule for when your teen can use the TV, and when it's your turn. 9. Or, request that they get their own TV to sidestep the issue entirely. 
Also, decide on if or how you'll share your streaming services. Consider going for a family plan that includes multiple profiles. 10. Request a plan for their future. Download article. Make sure they know this isn't a permanent arrangement. You're happy to help them get a head start on independent living, but at some point they'll have to actually become independent. 10. Have your child. Come up with a timeline for leaving the nest, one that includes a specific date for when they'll start looking for their own housing, as well as an expected move-out date. Having an expected move-out date helps you and your team from falling into the perpetual living-at-home trap. Instead, your focus is on the future, and finding ways to make that future, an empty nest, happen. 11. Schedule regular household meetings. Download article. Make frequent and honest communication a priority. A harmonious household requires that everyone be on the same page. 11. Hold a weekly or monthly household meeting, where everyone can express their concerns, how chores are going, how people feel about the division of work and bills, etc. Use this as an Opportunity to resolve any conflicts in the household, let your team speak freely, and strive to calmly address their concerns. If your teen is unhappy with the living situation, ask them why and how. Remember that you may need to make some compromises yourself to have a healthy, peaceful home. Also use the opportunity to schedule fun household. Activities like outings to the zoo or a movie night. Bonding activities help keep everyone happy as they cohabitate. 12. Respect their freedom, and ask that they do the same for you. Download article. Remember that your kid is an adult, but so are you. It might be tough to keep in mind, it seems like just yesterday that they were in diapers, but your teen is old enough to make their own decisions. Unless it directly puts the household at risk, let them manage their own time and live their own life. But also maintain your own boundaries and remind them that you won't be at their beck and call. Unless your teen asks for it, resist giving your own opinions about their daily life. This can feel stifling to a Teen who's trying to take the next step toward living on their own, and might only push them away emotionally. 13. Make a cohabitation contract. Download article. Put your rules into writing, and have your teen sign it. Make a bulleted list of your expectations for your teen, with each rule clearly described. 12. Then make sure they sign it so there aren't any excuses. Later about vague or unspoken expectations. Tell them that if the contract is broken, they'll have to find new living arrangements. Place the signed contract somewhere visible, like on the fridge, as a reminder of everyone's responsibilities. Be sure to stick to that contract yourself. Your teen has. No obligation to respect the contract if you don't, either. 14. Add a renegotiation clause. Download article. Leave room to alter your rules, for your own sake. It could be that. A month into living with your teen you find that you didn't assign. Enough chores. Or, maybe that curfew is keeping them around the house a bit too much and you need space. Make it clear from the get-go that your rules could change, if need be. 13. That goes both ways. If your teen has complaints or takes issue with some rules, 
hear them out. Remember that. This is a big lifestyle change for them, and it may be overwhelming if your rules are too stifling. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Enforce your rules through encouragement, rather than punishment. If your team does all they are asked, reward them with a break from certain responsibilities, and be sure to express your gratitude when they follow your contract. Remember that these are only suggestions. Establish rules that work for your household and lifestyle, and feel free to leave the rest. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. You might also like how to put a friend or relative out of your house. Signs your family doesn't care for you as they should and how to deal with it. What does it mean to be family? Oriented. Definition, examples, and more. Get closer with your cousins. Gaining trust, building relationships and more. Eight common family structures in modern day society. What to know about practicing naturism with your children. 80 plus funny, heartfelt, and unique. Birthday messages for your sister-in-law. How to disown your family. Can you move out at 16? Here's what you need to know. 7 Reasons You Feel Irritable Around Your Family and How to Cope 7 Comforting Things to Say to Family When Someone is Dying What to Do When Your Mom Says Hurtful Things, How to React How to Cut Ties with Family Members Who Hurt You What is an Auntie in Indian Culture References 1 https forward slash forward slash www.oregonlive.com forward slash advice forward slash 2022 forward slash 01 forward slash ask Amy grandparents welcome. E18 year old to live with them but want to lay down some house rules. HTML 2 https forward slash forward slash your teen mag dot com forward slash stuff we love forward slash teenager summer forward slash house rules for call lay gay students in summer 3 https forward slash forward slash www dot psychology toady dot com forward slash us forward slash blog forward slash the age over indulgence forward slash two zero one nine zero two forward slash our adult children are living back home again help me. 4 https forward slash forward slash www.psychologitoady.com forward slash us forward slash blog forward slash life after 50 forward slash 202009 forward slash have your young adult children moved back home. 5 https forward slash forward slash parents dot or dot reach out dot com forward slash skills to build forward slash well being forward slash things to try well in forward slash six reasons to get teens in the kitchen. 6 https forward slash forward slash www.psychologitoady.com forward slash us forward slash blog forward slash the age over indulgence forward slash 201902 forward slash our adult children are living back home again help me 7 https forward slash forward slash www.oregonlive.com forward slash advice forward slash 2022 forward slash 01 forward slash ask Amy grandparents welcome. E18 year old to live with them but want to lay down some house rules. HTML 8 https forward slash forward slash www.psychologitoady.com forward slash us forward slash blog forward slash the age over indulgence forward slash 201902 forward slash 
our adult children are living back home again help me. 9 https forward slash forward slash your teen mag dot com forward slash stuff we love forward slash teenager summer forward slash house rules for call. Lay gay students in summer. More references for about this article. Co authored by Kirsten Thompson, MD. Board certified psychiatrist. This article was co authored by Kirsten Thompson. MD and by WikiHow staff. Writer, Luke Smith, MFA. Dr. Kirsten Thompson is a board certified psychiatrist, clinical instructor at UCLA, and the founder of Remedy Psychiatry. She specializes in helping patients with mental health conditions such as major depressive disorder, anxiety, ADHD, bipolar disorder, OCD. PTSD, and postpartum depression. Dr. Thompson holds a B.S. in Operations Research Industrial Engineering from Cornell University and an M.D. from the State University of New York, Downstate College of Medicine. This article has been viewed 53,593 times. 35 votes, 89%. Co-authors, 5. Updated, the 17th of June, 2024. Views, 53,593. Categories, Family Life Youth. Print. Send fan mail to authors. Thanks to all authors for creating a page that has been read 53,593 times. Did this article help you? Yes no. Co-authored by Kirsten Thompson, MD. Board Certified Psychiatrist. Co-authors, 5. Updated, the 17th of June, 2024. Views, 53,593. 89% of readers found this article helpful. 35 votes, 89%. Click a star to add your vote. Anonymous. The 18th of January. My daughter came home after being adopted 10 years ago. I was lost on how to set rules in the house. Seeing as she. More. Rated this article. Share yours. More success stories. Quizzes. A My Smart Quiz. Take Quiz. What Disney Princess Am I Quiz? Take Quiz. Do I Have a Phobia Quiz? Take Quiz. Do I Have a Dirty Mind Quiz? Take Quiz. Guess My Age Quiz. Take Quiz. How Insecure Am I Quiz? Take Quiz. You might also like. How to. Put a friend or relative out of your house. Signs your family doesn't care for you as they should and how to deal with it. What does it mean to be family oriented? Definition, examples, and more. Get closer with your cousins, gaining trust, building relationships and more. Featured articles. How to reduce acne scars with home remedies. What celebrity do I look like quiz? How to Write funny stories How to Arrange furniture in a small bedroom How to play the werewolf card game with your friends How to Deal with a know-it-all Trending articles How to do 4th of July nails, 40 plus nail art ideas The real meaning of how was your night plus the best answers to give. How to celebrate the 4th of July, 42 Independence Day activities. What it means to raise a girl. Couple compatibility test. How to hold a newborn baby, safe and proper techniques. Featured articles. Am I in love quiz. How to give a relaxing full body massage at home. 
How to swim. How to make chicken nuggets. Simple and effective ways to stay hydrated overnight. How to wear a bikini confidently. Featured articles. How to have a summer fling. How to make banana bread. How to make water taste better. How to succeed in college. 17 Pro Tips to Start Living a Healthier Lifestyle Watch Articles How to Make Stamped Metal Jewelry How to Make Hot Cheetos How to Make an Aloe Vera Face Mask How to Fold a Shirt for Travel How to Apply Eye Makeup on Fair Skin How to Stretch your inner thighs. Categories. Youth. Wikihow newsletter. Helpful how-tos delivered to. Your inbox every week. Sign me up. By signing up you are agreeing to receive emails according to our privacy policy. Home. About Wikihow. Experts. Jobs. Contact us. Site map. Terms of use. Privacy policy. Contribute. Get all the best how to's. Sign up for WikiHow's weekly email newsletter. Subscribe. How to make a difference as a Christian youth. Download article. Parts. 1. Having the right attitude. 2. Learning more about your faith. 3. Giving back to others. Other sections. Video. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Olivia Woodford. Last updated, the 13th of August, 2023 approved. If you want to make a difference as a Christian youth, you should remember that it's not just about going to church or reading the Bible, although those things definitely matter. You can make a difference by living a Christian life every single day. There are many ways you can give back and make a difference as a Christian youth. Part 1. Having the right attitude. Download article. 1. Be a good example for other youth. As a Christian youth, you should lead by example. That means following Christian teachings. Everything you do in your life should reflect the goodness of God. 1. Show positivity, smile, and do good works. 2. Don't talk behind other people's backs. Be kind to all people, including those who aren't popular. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Walk the walk. Don't just talk the talk. Be a leader. Don't participate or laugh at sinful subjects. Just walk away. But also try to get people to stop doing it. If you see bullying occurring, intervene. Be the one person at your school that doesn't tolerate cussing or gossip. Don't drink, smoke, party, cheat on tests, gossip, or engage in other negative behaviors. Be someone who spends Friday night on their knees in prayer rather than at a party getting wasted. 2. Be patient and kind. If people can't tell you're a Christian by your actions and words, you're doing it wrong. You need to live every single day with the right attitude. Love others and be willing to help them even at cost to yourself. 3. This is a fundamental commandment that Jesus gave during his time on earth. To love others as you love yourself is so important. Don't let ego and status stop you from treating others as you would your own brothers and sisters. Don't be close-minded. 
love all people of all religions, races, sexual orientations, and beliefs. Don't swear or speak about inappropriate things, or make intolerant statements. You can't make a positive difference if you are cursing or making dirty jokes. Be respectful, honorable, and pure. Set an example of Christianity every day at work or school, or both. Be humble, kind, patient, and respectful when engaging with non-Christians. 3. Reach out to people who are shunned by others. Jesus showed love to people who were treated negatively by others or regarded lowly by society. Never give up on someone, and especially never give up on God, in the good times and the bad. You will encounter islands in school and other settings. This means there are people who only hang out with certain people because they don't know anyone else and won't make an effort to know anyone else. It is something everyone does. You need to step up and be a bridge, which means stepping out of your comfort zone. You can sit with someone who sits alone at lunch and just be a friend. Or you could lend a listening ear to them. Building a personal relationship is a great first step to leading someone to Christ. A subtle but effective way to spread faith is to plant seeds and allow the Holy Spirit to take root within others. You have the relationships with the people around you already, and you can be the one who encourages them, offers prayers, and lives out the Bible so as to be an example of God's love and grace. Treat everyone as an equal, whatever their status in life or profession, remember that all people are God's creation and deserve a chance to be understood. 4. Be able to take rejection or loss with grace. You should be happy to do the good deeds you do. However, it can be more challenging to show a positive attitude when you are rejected or otherwise face negativity in your life. When confronted about your beliefs, don't freak out. Remember that everyone has a different story as to how they became a Christian, whether it was a dramatic conversion or they just grew up in it, but no matter how you became a Christian, it's your first hand account. Tell people why you believe what you believe even if they ridicule you for it. 4. Turn the other cheek. If someone is rude to you or cruel, show them forgiveness and love. Forgiveness is a Christian trait. We are all born sinners, and we all struggle and we all fall at times. Don't let that discourage you. If someone's hurt you, find a way to forgive. When you fall, forgive yourself too, and pick yourself back up. And try again. What matters to God is how many times you stand up. Strive to grow in a positive way. You are unique, you have your own gifts, talents, strengths, weaknesses, likes and dislikes. Grow the positive aspects of your personality. Part 2. Learning more about your faith. Download article. 1. Keep studying your faith. Continue to study and learn about your faith as you get older. Know that even adults still work on the tough questions. Come to youth group with a heart that wants to learn. People will notice a change in your group. Start answering questions and step out of your comfort zone. Once you step out of your comfort zone, others will start to step out of theirs. 5. Spouting verse is all well and good, but understanding the deeper meaning behind it all, how it fits into the entire narrative, 
of the Bible is more important. You can say God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. John 3:16. but until you can show that same love to others, it's difficult for others to see the positive change caused by your faith. 2. Read the Bible. You could try to read a scripture a day. God's word is vital to a Christian life because it provides guidelines. You could also listen to podcasts or watch YouTube videos on your faith. Ask questions. You won't know everything. There are many Christians who have studied faith for their whole lives, but they still don't know everything. Keep in mind that historical context, language, translation, context or meaning can matter when reading Christian teachings. Seek out older religious teachers and show them great respect, such as a pastor or priest or a Sunday school teacher. Ask them to help you learn more about your faith. Make sure that you keep involved in a Bible study, preferably involving kids your age. This is much more effective in helping you learn and relate to the Bible than attending only traditional worship services. 3. Pray as often as you can and go to church. You can simply start off by saying, God, I do not know what to do, but I have this desire in my heart to make a difference. God doesn't care what you say to him. He just loves to listen to you. 6. You could start a prayer journal so that you can remember what you prayed for and then see how God has answered your prayers. Don't forget to pray for others too, not just for yourself. You should attend church as much as you can and ask your parents if they can drive you. Try memorizing some important prayers and saying them before you go to bed and every meal. Just take time out of your day to relax and think about God, what are you thankful for and what you did wrong and could improve. Ask God what to do through prayer. God knows all your abilities, strengths, and weaknesses and He knows what's right for you to do to make a difference. Don't let your age or comfort zones get in the way of doing what God calls you to do. Part 3. Giving back to others. Download article. 1. Lead a fundraiser to help someone in need. Maybe you start out by collecting spare change or donating your allowance. Find a worthy cause, and help collect donations for it. Or just give whatever money you have to a good cause. 7. You could use an online donation site. You can also help by joining or helping a cause that revolves around helping people know about God and His Word. There are many organizations that cater to the needs of less fortunate people all across the world as well as teach them about Christ. Perhaps you do car washes or lemonade stands. Sell your old books. It's not necessarily how much you donate that counts. It's the fact you're giving most or all of what you have that matters. 2. Join a youth group or mission. This is another way that you can give back, by getting involved with group activities associated with your church. Try to get involved in your local church's mission trips whether they are around the world, national, or local. If your church does not have these types of trips, you could bring the idea to the congregation. 8. Try tithing, giving 10% of your money to your church, or donating some of the stuff you don't use anymore. Inviting your friends to church or youth group are great ideas too. 
Don't treat youth group like school, and don't act like it bores. You dedicate yourself to God, and show this by always staying happy and cheerful and giving what you can to the group. You could also start forward slash join a Christian club at your school, if it's allowed. Remember that a mission doesn't have to be across an ocean. You could go on a mission trip to a local college or high school and help out staff with some church friends and talk about Jesus to anyone willing to listen. 3. Be open about your faith and principles. At times, this might be very difficult. You might feel like the only Christian youth around who is open about faith. Stand your ground. Actively develop your relationship with Christ. Get out and interact with people and develop relationships. Christian youth are ambassadors, not secret agents. In order to change people's hearts, you first need to interact with them. Be as outward as possible about your faith. You could wear shirts that spark conversations. Stand up for and voice your moral beliefs. You can do this in a way that sounds positive, not negative. Be willing to stand up for what you believe in. Be a witness to what God has done for you. As a Christian, a lot of young people have some, little, or absolutely no faith in God whatsoever. By being walking proof about what the word has to offer, you are making a difference. Somewhere. 4. Give back by volunteering your time. You could help the homeless, take care of an elderly or disabled person, or work at an animal shelter. Help at your church, school, and in your home too. You can also give back in smaller ways by simply being a positive force in your environment. Help classmates with school work out of class, for example. You can organize park cleanups or volunteer for blood drives. Help your church. Basically just volunteer to help your church. It could be something as simple as holding the door for people. Visiting your church. You could offer to clean up after the services. 5. Share your faith if you think it will help others. This doesn't mean that you try to push your beliefs on others. However, if someone asks you about what keeps you strong in all you do, gently tell them you believe in God, and you put all your worries forward slash fears forward slash pain on to God so that you can help others with theirs. Also don't be afraid to share your testimony talk to your youth. Minister forward slash pastor about opportunities to share your story, and where you can help within the church. The important thing to remember is that simply letting people know you are a Christian can sometimes be enough as long as you are happy and friendly. And don't force anything down anyone's throat. It's a good idea to let more people know that God has their back. If you perceive that a person is struggling and receptive to the message. However, understand that being a Christian is not about beating out other religions. Christianity is a peaceful and loving religion. Learn to love the people around you for who they are and that you cannot change them by shoving a Bible down their throat. If you want to show how Christianity has made you a better person, be kind to those around you, regardless of their beliefs. Expert Q&A Ask a question. Submit. Video. Tips. If you ever feel distant from God, try to spend time praying or contemplating God. In a quiet room with no distractions. Try listening to Christian music and reading Christian books. 
To make a difference in other people's lives, first change yours. If you aren't centered in God and if you don't understand your own faith, it will be harder to make a difference. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. Be truly open-minded. Honestly listen to people of other religions, and even atheists. This will make you more approachable and open you up to a wider and more diverse social circle. Start your own prayer group. Gather some friends from church and have discussions over certain portions of the Bible. Pray together and encourage each other to be better people. Be yourself and don't ever change who you are. Know that you are a special and unique creature created by God. How to determine if you are a tall girl. Download article. Parts. 1. Determining if you're a tall girl. 2. Being proud to be tall. Other sections. Questions and answers. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Reviewed by Kaylee Hewlett. Last updated, the 26th of June, 2024. Fact checked. You're used to towering over all of your female friends. You feel guilty for blocking. People's views when you go to the movies or a concert. When you first meet people. They stare up at you and say, wow, you're so tall. And you're like, yep. If the S.E. Things have happened to you, then yeah, you are a tall girl. But it doesn't have to be a. Tragedy. Beauty comes in all shapes and sizes, and if you're tall, you should be proud of. Your long legs and beautiful looks. Here's how to know if you're tall and how to make. The most of it. Part. 1. Determining if you're a tall girl. Download article. 1. See if you're taller than most of the girls you know. If you're standing. Around a group of your friends and you're towering over them, then yeah. You're tall. Check out a photo of you and your friends and see where you stack. Up if you're ahead above the rest of your friends, then yep, you're probably tall. But remember that it also depends on who you hang out with you won't. Look so tall if you're hanging out with members of the volleyball team instead of regular girls. 2. See if you have a hard time finding clothes that fit you. If you regularly have a hard time finding pants that fit you because they are always too short, then, yeah, you're tall. You may even hear your girlfriends complaining about always having to hem their pants because they are too long and may wonder what the heck they are talking about. You may also have a hard time finding shirts that don't look like belly shirts when you put them on. 1. As for shorts, if you're tall, then it may be hard for you to find shorts that cover much of your legs, if your school has a dress code where your fingertips have to reach the bottom of your shorts, it may be nearly impossible for you to find a pair of shorts that is long enough. 3. See if everyone around you asks if you play basketball or volleyball. If everyone around you asks if you play these tall girl sports, then it may be a sign that you are taller than average. This can be annoying if you don't actually play those sports or any sports at all. People love to assume things about others because of their looks, and you shouldn't get too discouraged by this. 4. See if you're 5'9 or taller. Though this measurement can change depending on your age and what country you're from. For example in Baltic countries, this is only a few inches above the average, whereas, in countries like Mexico, where 
People are shorter, this is quite a tall height for a woman. 2. 5. See if you're just hitting puberty earlier than other people. In general, girls hit puberty between the ages of 8 to 13, and boys hit puberty between the ages of 9 to 15. This means that, if you feel tall but you're only 11, you may just be developing faster than a lot of your girlfriends, and may be taller than the boys around you, who will take a bit longer to catch up. If you're still in the midst of puberty and many of your friends haven't hit puberty yet, then don't worry in a year or two, you'll be surprised by how quickly you stop feeling like the tall girl. 6. See if you can never blend in when you're in a crowd. If you're in a room full of people, and your friends can spot you right away from across the crowded space, then yeah, it may be because you're so tall that you stand out easily. There's nothing wrong with that who says that standing out is a bad thing. 7. See if you never have enough legroom. Whether you're sitting on a plane or in the passenger seat of your friend's car, if you always feel like you have to move your legs to one side, recline the seat, or just contort your body to get your feet on the ground, then you may be a tall girl. 8. See if you tower over most of the guys your age. If those middle school or high school dances are awkward because any guy you dance with is just short. Enough to be eye level with your chest when it's time to sway to a slow song. Then yeah, you're a tall girl. But don't be discouraged there's a good chance. That a lot of the guys you know haven't stopped growing yet. 9. See if you feel guilty for always blocking everyone's view when you go to a concert or the movies. You can't help being tall. But still, you find yourself. Feeling guilty whenever you go to a concert or the movies, because you just know that the person behind you can't see a thing. There's not much you can do about it except slouch in your seat. If this sounds like you, then you're probably a tall girl. Part 2. Being proud to be tall. Download article. 1. Remember that tall is beautiful. And hey, so is being short. Don't think that. Being tall means you have to be gangly, awkward, or unappealing. Plenty of. Beautiful women are tall, and they know how to own their tall look by not. Shying away from attention. Don't think that being tall makes you somehow. Inadequate or unappealing to guys. Here are some tall female celebrities, just to show you that. You're not alone, Gwyneth Paltrow, 5'9", Jordan Sparks, 5'9". Charlize Theron, 5'10", Taylor Swift, 5'10", Famke Johnson, 6", and Maria Sharapova, 6'2". 2. 2. Don't slouch. You may think that slouching will make you look shorter, and... While this is literally true, it will actually call more attention to the fact that you're not happy with your height. So stand tall and proud and don't worry about towering over the people around you they should be the ones wishing they were as tall as you. 3. Don't worry about being taller than the guys. Sure, guys may be intimidated by you because you're so tall but that doesn't mean you can't talk to them or show them how awesome you are. Don't think that you have no chance with a guy just because he's shorter than you. If you find a guy you like, get to know him and you'll see that height is just a number. 4. Remember that the grass is always greener on the other side. You may be Feeling miserable because you feel like you're taller than all of your friends and that all of your shorts are too short, 
but your short friend may hate having to stand on her tiptoes to talk to people or having to hem all of her jeans by half a foot so that they'll fit her. You may not want to be tall, but plenty of girls would die to be in your shoes. Whether you're tall or short, it's all about embracing who you are instead of wishing you were someone else. Community Q&A Question I'm as tall as my parents at the age of 12, about 5 feet 6 inches. How tall will I be? I want to be super tall. Community answer. Height is hereditary, so if there are tall people in your family tree, you have a better chance of being tall. You can still be growing up until your late teens or early 20s. It would be hard to predict your full adult height at age 12. Not helpful 31 helpful 127. Question. I just turned 14 and I'm 5'11". My doctor says I'll be 6'1-6'4 and no guys like me because I'm too tall. Is there anything I can do about this? I hate my height so much and I wish I could look normal. Community answer. It doesn't matter whether people like you or not because of your height. If someone judges you or doesn't want to go out with you because you're tall, that's their loss. There is no such thing as normal when it comes to appearance. The way you look is just fine. Supermodels are really tall. Since you can't change your height, all you can really do is try to embrace it. Be yourself and surround yourself with people that love you and support you. Not helpful 31 helpful 185. Question. Though I'm now comfortable with my height 5, I don't know how to. Respond to family elders asking in front of everyone oh, you look so tall. How much more will you grow? How we will find room? Cage a cat. Top answerer. People will always comment on something. If not your height, it'd be your hair or eye color, or body structure, etc. So, expect the comments. Develop humorous. Responses. Yes, humor. Dad says I got tall to save him from having to change. Light bulbs. But mom says a witch cast a giraffe spell on me. See my long neck. As you brush your hair back, too bad I didn't get the giraffe's long eyelashes. Practice saying it in front of a mirror before trying it out. Don't forget to smile. And laugh, after all, it's poking fun at yourself in a cute way. Not helpful 9 helpful 30. See more answers. The 24 best party games for teens and. How to play them. Download article. Throw the coolest parties using this handy game guide for teens. Co-authored by Lisa Masile and Glenn Cario. Last updated. The 16th of March, 2024 Fact Checked Looking for a few teenager-friendly games to liven up your next party? No Problem Party games can be a great way to bond with your friends and make your gathering more memorable. If you want to introduce some new games to your friends but aren't sure where to start, read through our list of party Games for teenagers to learn all about each hilarious and delightful game, plus How to play them Things you should know Play a funny party game like Wacky Duck, where you and your fellow Players must quack like ducks while someone else tries to guess whose Quack is whose Try a board game like Clue, in which you and your friends must roll dice and collect evidence to see who can solve a murder the fastest. Play a classic party game like Would You Rather, where each player 
asks would you rather questions with two choices, and everyone else must pick an option. 1. Wacky Duck Download article Wacky Duck is a goofy game where players use fake voices to win. Sit in a circle, choose one person to be it and sit them in the center of the circle, blindfolded. It must then feel around for people with a newspaper rolled up, and whoever they stop in front of must quack like a duck. If it can guess who quacked, they win. If they can't, they have to keep looking and guessing until they get one right. Try to play this game with at least eight players to ensure it's a challenge for the guesser to pinpoint who is quacking. After blindfolding the it person, you could also spin them in a few circles and rearrange the seating to ensure they don't know who is sitting where. 2. Wink Assassin Download article Wink Assassin is a stealth game where players must catch a killer. Prepare a chit, a small slip of paper, for every player. Participating Labeling one as the killer and have players pick chits to determine who the murderer is. Then, everyone must stand in a circle and look at one another. The murderer must try to secretly kill players by winking at them, and everyone else has to determine the killer's identity. 1. When the killer winks at someone, they have to count to 5 then scream and pretend to die. To guess who the murderer is, a player has to say I accuse. Then, other players will have until the count of three to back up the accuser. As soon as two accusers point to the same suspect, and that suspect is indeed the murderer, the game ends. 3. Would you rather Download article would You Rather is a light-hearted game of choices and decision. Making. Have all players arrange themselves in a circle and then. Choose someone to begin the game. That person must say a would you. Rather, prompt, asking a question with two options or scenarios. The. Person they ask has to pick one of the two choices. From there, you can. Continue playing until you have exhausted your questions. 2. Would you rather be an only child or have 12 siblings? Would you rather never play a video game again, or never use your favorite app again? Would you rather wear winter clothes or summer clothes all year long? Would you rather meet Lady Gaga or Taylor Swift? 4. Balloon Blow Download article Balloon Blow challenges players to make balloons fly by blowing them. Start by dividing all the players into pairs and giving each pair a balloon. From there, the goal of the game is simple, keep the balloon in the air as long as possible by blowing on it. The pair whose balloon stays up in the air longest wins the game. This game is best played with at least six players, or three pairs. Remember to only blow on the balloon, no headbutts, wrist bumps, or anything else, as you play. 5. Medusa Download article Medusa is a fast-paced game of chance to play with a large group. Have every player stand in a circle, arms around each other's. Shoulders with their heads lowered. Then, on the count of three, or whatever number you agree on, everyone must look up at one another. If two players make eye contact, they have to scream and drop dead and the last pair standing wins the game. Try playing this game with at least ten players or more if possible. 6. Never have I ever Download article. Reveal your craziest stories while playing a game of Never Have I 
ever. This is best played by teens that know each other and are comfortable sharing a few secrets. First, give everyone a few pieces of candy and pick a player to go first. That player must say a phrase, beginning with never have I ever, and ending with something they've never done. If another player has done it, they must eat a piece of candy. 3. Never have I ever been out of the country. Never have I ever seen an R-rated movie. Never have I ever done something super embarrassing. In the middle of class. If you want to play for winners and losers, you could say. The first person to eat their candy loses, or, conversely. The first person to eat their candy wins. 7. Sleeping Beauty Download article Players must try to make each other laugh in Sleeping Beauty. 2. Play Sleeping Beauty, have a single person in the group of players lie down and close their eyes, pretending to be asleep. Then, it's everyone else in the group's job to make funny sounds and say goofy things to try and get them to laugh, all without touching them. 4. As soon as Sleeping Beauty laughs, reset the game, and pick someone else to be Sleeping Beauty. 8. Speed Stacker Download article Speed Stacker challenges players to stack as many cups as they can. Begin Speed Stacker by arranging 50 or more plastic cups on a table and stationing every player around it. Then, each player gets one minute to try and stack as many cups as they can, all playing simultaneously, and whoever can stack the most cups wins the game. 9. Singing Bingo Download article Singing Bingo lets you listen to your favorite songs as you play. Start by creating a bingo card, much like the classic game, where every space has a word that is commonly used in songs. All players must then listen to music on the radio, if they hear a song that uses a word on their bingo card, they can mark off that space. The first Person to declare bingo, wins. 5. Commonly overused words in songs include terms like Oh babe or love. Alternatively, make a set of flash cards with overused words to match your bingo cards. Have players take turns picking cards and singing a lyric that incorporates whatever word is on the card. 10. Makeup Artist Download article Makeup Artist lets you test your Mackie over skills blindly on Friends Break all the players into two teams and choose a makeup Artist for each team, blindfolding that person Then, choose a player to Serve as the Makeup Artist's client The Makeup Artist must try to apply Make up to their client while all the other team members try to guide them from the sidelines. 6. Once both makeup artists are done, or if you chose to time them, once time runs out, decide who did the better job and declare that team the winner. 11. Baby in the Air. Download article. Baby in the air lets players toss water balloons, and get soaked. Fill at least 10 water balloons with water and have players. Stand in a circle, with one player in the middle. Then, assign each person a number. The person in the center must call out a number at random, throw a water balloon, and the person whose number was Called must try to catch it. Anyone who drops the balloon is out. 7. For example, if your assigned number was 8 and the person in the middle of the group yelled, Baby in the air. 
I call number eight you'd have to run forward to try and catch the water balloon. At least eight, or more, players are ideal when playing baby. In the air. Play this game outdoors if you can, popped water. Balloons can get messy. 12. Scavenger Hunt Download article The goal of a scavenger hunt is to track down a list of items the fastest. First, create a wild and imaginative scavenger hunt list full of things. For players to track down. Scout out the area for the scavenger hunt. Ahead of time to make your list and ensure everything your players will need is there. Then, hand out the lists and let the hunt begin. The first person, or team, to find and take pictures of everything wins the game. 8. Items on a scavenger hunt list tend to vary by the location the hunt is held in. For example, if you have a scavenger hunt in a mall, you might ask players to find things like the most expensive shoes in Macy's or meat lovers pizza at the food court. You could also create an Instagram hashtag, like hash all scavenger hunt or hash hunt, for all the participants to use as they post their scavenger hunt. Photos 13. Balloon War Download article Balloon Wars lets players duke it out by popping each other's balloons. Blow up enough balloons for every player to get three, and have them write their name on those three balloons. Then, each player must try to pop one another's balloons however they can, using an object no sharper than a crown. Each balloon symbolizes a life and d the last. Person standing with a balloon wins the game. Balloon war is a game of strategy. You can't hide any of your balloons, they have to be on your person no matter what, but you can hide with them. 14. Emoji Pictionary Download article Emoji Pictionary challenges players to tell a story with emojis. Only In essence, this is Pictionary with emojis instead of pencils and paper. Split into teams, when it's your turn to draw think of a book, movie, or TV show and try to spell it out with a string of emojis while your team guesses what it is. If they guess correctly, you get a point. And the team with the most points wins. If you have a Pictionary board game on hand, you can also use that for emoji prompts. Avoid prompts that can be depicted with one emoji, as those are too obvious, for example, a secret word like banana would be easy to guess. 15. The caller. Download article. Find the caller in this fun and creepy version of hide and seek. First and foremost, make sure you're playing this game at night. Start by turning off all the lights in the house or building, or begin the game in an unlit outdoor area. One person, the caller, must hide while everyone else tries to find them. The caller can call players to hint at their location but must keep moving around to evade them. Simultaneously. 9. Once somebody finally finds the caller, the game ends. This is a great party game to play inside or outside, so long as you play it at night for that exciting, mysterious, and slightly creepy vibe. 16. Mummify Me Download article Mummify Me lets you turn a friend into a homemade mummy. Begin the game by splitting into groups of three. Each group gets a few rolls of toilet paper and must choose a teammate to be the mummy. Then, at the same time, 
the competing groups must try to wrap their teammates in toilet paper from head to toe, and the first team to finish their mummy wins. 10. If you want to change the game, teams could win based on creativity rather than timing. For example, if one team made a decorative toilet paper bow or colored the paper with a marker, they could win points for originality. 17. Guess the tune. Download article. Listen to music and find out who knows the lyrics best in guess. The tune. Make a playlist or burn a CD with some popular songs that most of your players will likely recognize. To begin, play either the first few seconds, the last few seconds, or a brief snippet from the middle of the song. Then, let players try to guess the song title and sing a few lines from it. The player with the most correct guesses wins. 11. When players are trying to guess the song, ensure they make their guesses one at a time. The person to raise their hand the fastest gets the first try, and if they don't get it, someone else can choose to make a guess. 18. I am. Download article. Test your acting skills against friends in a game of I am. Take. Turns impersonating someone everyone in the group of players knows. Whether it's a celebrity, a character in pop culture, a parent, a teacher, or even someone else in the room. Let other players try to guess who it is while you do an impersonation of them. The player with the most correct guesses wins. Since this is a game of acting skills, you could also give away a prize to the person who does the best, or funniest, impression. 19. Sock Wrestling Download article. See how fast you can remove socks with no hands in sock. Wrestling. This game can be played with two players at a time, they must begin by lying on the floor near one another, wearing socks, but no shoes or other footwear. Then, at the same time, they must try to maneuver both socks off of their feet without using their hands at all. The player who does it the fastest wins the game. If the game starts to get old after a while, you could amp it up by changing the rules and having players race to put on socks using just their feet instead. 20. Clue Download article Clue is a mystery game where players must try to find a murderer. On your turn, roll dice to move around the board. When you enter a room on the board, you can ask a question, guessing the murderer, weapon, and room, and get a clue from a fellow player. To win the clue board game, you need to discover three details of a murder. Plot, who did it, the weapon they used, and the room it took place. In 12. You'll play as one of the six possible suspects, exploring. The mansion of the murder victim, Mr. Body, to collect evidence. Once you gather enough clues to solve the case, make an accusation and win the game. If you and your friends are in the mood for a classic who done it, then play a game of clue and whet your mystery solving appetite. Ensure you have a minimum of two and a maximum of six players for your game of clue. 21. You know attack. Download article. You know is a fast-paced game that lets you sabotage friends as you play. In the classic card game, players start with a hand of seven cards and must take turns trying to empty their hand by matching a card in their hand to the top of the discard pile according to number or color. 
players with one card remaining must immediately yell you know and the first player to get rid of all their cards wins. You know attack also adds a card machine that spits cards if you can't find a match in your hand. With the addition of the you know attack card machine, the game becomes more exciting and challenging for everyone. You know attack can accommodate a minimum of 2 players and a maximum of 10 players. 22. Apples to Apples Download article Apples to Apples is a game of hilarious and clever comparisons. Each round, a judge is appointed from among the players, and they must draw a green apple card, which has an adjective on it. Then, the rest of the players have to play a red apple card, which has a noun on it, and the judge must decide which red card best matches the green. The goal of apples to apples is to win the most green cards before the game ends. 13. For example, if the judge picked a green card that had cute for its adjective, and two of the red cards in your Hand were flipper and milk duds you might play the flipper card, since dolphins are often considered cute. Play apples to apples with a minimum of 4 players and a maximum of 10. 23. Catan Board Game Download article Catan is a strategy game in which you can build your own civilization. Play Catan by setting up an outpost on the board. Then, on each turn, roll the dice to determine which resource cards you'll collect, if any, and use those cards to build towns, cities, and roads. You can also offer to trade with another player for resources you need. You'll gain victory points for building your civilization, and the first player to Get 10 points wins. 14. Catan can ordinarily be played with 2 to 4 players, but there are also expansion packs that bring the total number of potential players to 6. Expert tip. Ashton Wu. Board game expert. Master your initial placement in Catan. Settle near high probability. Number tiles. 5 to 8, and prioritize diverse resources around your settlements. This increases your options and sets you up for beneficial trades with fellow settlers. Building a strong foundation with immediate resource income is a magical strategy for conquering Catan. 24. 5 Second Rule Download Article 5 Second Rule tests players to see how well they think on their feet. The rules of this game are simple, players must take turns. Drawing a card with a topic on it, and they'll get 5 seconds to think of 3 things related to that topic and say them out loud. Since your time is so limited, most players end up blurting out the first thing they think of which can make for some pretty surprising and hilarious results. You'll need at least three players to play the five-second rule. Game.